So dear students, dear teachers, colleagues, uh, it is really a pleasure to um, introduce you to the field of biological barriers and I also would like to uh, present you the Biological Barriers Research Group and its activity. The question arises why biological barriers are important. Uh, as you can see from the image, we have different barrier systems in our body. It can be outer barriers, like our biggest barrier, skin. Also, we have barriers at the surface of the eye. We, have, we can think as barriers our respiratory system, so lining of the respiratory system. And it's difficult to think because our gastrointestinal system is in our body inside, but this is a surface which is directly contacting bacteria from the outside world. We also have inner barriers, and we mainly work with the blood-brain barrier, which is in our head, in our brain, and these are the capillary, the tiniest blood vessels. So what these barriers do? They are a protective system, and the protection is made uh, by two major ways. One is like a physical barriers. So that means the cells are tight, uh, are, are uh, joined together with proteins, special proteins, which are making uh, really a strong contact between them. So as you can see uh, here, so basically this is the space, the cleft between the cells, and this is just simply closed by this strong connection between different proteins from what cell one and cell two. Here you can see the same on an electron micrographic picture, and basically that's the physical barrier that is not letting in pathogens like microbes uh, or uh, parasites, or this is a virus. There is also a secondary system, which is called a chemoprotection. So this is against toxic molecules, because we are eating or drinking uh, things that are not uh, necessarily good for us. Sometimes they are toxic. And that's a chemoprotection system, which is made by so-called efflux pumps or transporter proteins. They are sitting in the membrane of the barrier-forming cells and they are catching the molecules entering the cell membrane, and then they are pumping them out in an active way. This is good that our body is protected. However, we also have some difficulties, especially when we want to treat patients. So drug delivery to the body itself or to different organs which are protected by inner barriers, like the brain, are limiting the entry of molecules that are water-soluble or are really large ones, the so-called biotherapeutics. Uh, these are, for example, enzymes or antibodies. And also, as you can imagine, if the barriers have got efflux pumps, a chemoprotection, so all the drugs that are ligands or substrates of these efflux pumps are actively kept out. So, that makes very difficult, for example, um, to give these biotherapeutics in an oral tablet because the absorption from the gastrointestinal system is blocked to the blood, or it makes also difficult the treatment of barrier-protected organs like the brain, so many neurological or brain diseases are difficult, very difficult to treat. Also, we should add that these barrier systems, for example, the blood-brain barrier, is also affected in many diseases, and not necessarily the diseases of the brain, like Alzheimer's disease, epilepsy, brain tumors, or the stroke, uh, what uh, Dr. Farkas, uh, Esther Farkas presented you before. Uh, but also systemic diseases like diabetes, when somebody's blood glucose level is extremely high, or infectious diseases, uh, which are, uh, uh, which are um, 
affected by the whole body, but it can also have special symptoms in the brain, like in the HIV virus caused AIDS. So how we are studying these barriers? There is a simplified way of modeling them, and these are the so-called cell culture model systems when we have culture inserts with porous membranes, we are seeding cells on it, the cells sit on it, make a confluent layer, and then we can study uh, the different, the tightness of the junctions because these uh, cell-cell contacts are so tight that even are not permeable to ions. And also we can do permeability studies uh, for microorganisms or also for drug compounds. We have a similar model for the blood-brain barrier using the same uh, culture inserts with porous membrane, but because in our brain the blood vessels are surrounded by pericytes and astroglial cells, two other cell types, uh, our model is more complicated to better mimic the anatomical situation and better mimic the blood-brain barrier properties that we have in vivo. We also have some new systems to model these culture barriers. And for this, uh, together with the bioelectronic group of the Biophysical Institute, we prepared a microfluidic uh, and microelectronic device that is the same two-channel system. And also, there is a porous membrane for the cell culture. And this allows us to have a so-called static setup, when the cells are only fed every couple of hours with the culture medium, but there is no flow. Or we can do a dynamic setup, when there is a pump which is circulating the fluid, like in a real body, there is a flow of blood in the blood vessels, for example, and then we can have a flow effect on our model system. We have basically two big research areas. One is to study uh, how to, we can improve the limited drug delivery across different barriers of the body. And we are working on respiratory ba barriers, eye barrier, lung barrier, and blood brain barrier too. We have basically two strategies. One is opening of the cell connecting junctions with peptides or small molecules, or we also do a targeted delivery of uh, nanoparticles, which is a different approach what uh, Esther was uh, uh, describing to you. We are also very much interested that how can we protect this very important barrier in different disease conditions. And we are modeling, uh, for example, Alzheimer's disease, epilepsy, pancreatitis, or even diabetes. Our first strategy to increase a drug delivery was twofold. So we made these experiments with a small uh, molecule, lipid-like small molecule, which is called alkyl glycerols, which are called alkyl glycerols. And here you can see an experiment in which we were measuring the resistance of the culture uh, cell layers. So basically, we want to open this uh, closed junk, uh, uh, this uh, paracellular junctions uh, closed by these uh, proteins. So when we are adding these archiglycerols, the resistance drops. That means that this junction is opened. But when we are removing it, it is returning. The electrical uh, resistance is returning. That means that we can open and close these uh, paracellular uh, junctions. Our other approach was that let's study peptides. We are specifically designed to bind to the proteins which are making uh, this physical barrier. And we were testing and comparing six of them. Again, one of the methods to test the barrier integrity was the resistance measurement compared to the control cells. When we added the peptides, this tightness of the layer dropped, but when we removed the peptides, it reversed. The other way how we can increase drug delivery in general is the nanoparticle uh, targeting. Uh, 
So we are using much bigger size nanoparticles than the group of Esther. The size is about 100 nanometer. And in this case, we were using a fluorescent nanoparticle that was labeled on the surface. So we used a small molecule which is called biotin. It's kind of vitamin for the body. And in the second one, we used a small peptide, the so-called glutathione peptide, that is an antioxidant. In both cases, as compared to the empty surface nanoparticles, the presence of biotin and glutathione increased the penetration of the nanoparticles into the cells, and we also measured whether these particles are crossing this barrier layer. And yes, indeed, both the biotin and the glutathione uh, labeling of the particles increased it. Part of this picture you could see from the talk this morning of Gergő Porkolab. So we were playing around that compared to a vesicular nanoparticle with the same size, 100 nanometer, which contains a, a cargo molecule in the middle. If we are decorating it with different kinds of molecules, or we are using different kinds of combination of targeting molecules, that we can really increase how the cargo is getting across the layer. So we were putting above the layer the model, the BBB model, and then we were measuring the cargo which was crossing this layer. And yes, compared to the cargo molecule alone, or the non-targeted nanoparticle, basically almost all of them increased this kind of penetration. And we could identify two combinations that was the, uh, the glutathione and the alanine, uh, glutata, uh, alanine glucopyranose and uh, alanine glutathione, that was a good combination to increase this targeting. We also did a lot of studies about how can we protect the blood-brain barrier, so we were checking several drugs. We were uh, looking for an antioxidant with, uh, which is used as a medicine in Japan called Adaravon, not yet used in the European Union. We also used a sulfated polysaccharide, which is a heparin um, analog. It's an anti, uh, has got some anticoagulant effect. That name is pentosan. And finally, we were using a phosphodiester as enzyme inhibitor, also with Japanese colleagues, silostazole, that were also all of them good in protecting blood-brain barrier. But I have a good news. Not only drugs can protect the blood-brain barrier, but also some molecules from fruits or drinks. So we could show that a lipid, a good lipid, uh, uh, unsaturated fatty acid uh, that you can find in fish was also protecting brain and the telia cells. We have many international cooperation partners uh, from Japan, from the European Union, also from uh, the USA and even from Mexico. And we are currently working in a multinational project on a very specific organ on a chip system that will be used to treat with specialized nanoparticles Parkinson's disease. With that, I would like to show you uh, that these are the home pages and Facebook profiles of the Biological Barriers Research Group. And we are very proud of our uh, senior year student, Gergő Porkolab, who joined us in 2016. And after two and a half year hard work, he really presented his work and got prizes at student research conferences. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.